Get to the chopper! Hi and welcome to Get to the Chopper. I'm Nathan Ferguson and we've got a big gun guest hosting the show tonight. The man they refer to as Happy, Mendy Blackhawks Football Operations Manager, Adrian Thompson. Hey, thanks for having me on, mate. And, uh, it's, it's a privilege to be on this show. It, it, uh, with the hosts you've had before, you know, plenty of good big gun hosts, as you're calling it, but no, thanks, mate. I reckon we've got the top one tonight. Yeah. Now, mate, is it hard to be happy at the moment because we're probably going to miss the finals for the first time in the club's history? Yeah, it is. I've got to say, it's, um, you know, we pride ourselves on our performance and our goal from day one is to be in the top four, if not in the finals each year, and this year we haven't achieved that goal. Um, at the end of the day, we weren't good enough and we've got to be better. Um, we're you know, obviously starting processes now, we're moving towards preparing for next year and part of that will be reviewing what we've done and you know, what we can be a lot better at and obviously the results on the field are you know, showing that and yeah, no, it's been a pretty even competition like Burley and Sunshine Coast have probably been the two sides most of the season that have been consistent, the rest have been up and down and you know, look it's still a pretty tough comp. Yeah, I think maybe minor miracle we can scrape in, but realistically, we're playing for pride on the weekend, and we probably want to have a better performance than we did last week against Tweed Heads. I guess the less said about our clash, the better, but briefly recapping the match at Pigger Bean, and the hosts had far too much firepower, the Seagulls scored eight unanswered tries, running out 42 to nil winners. Again, look, it's something that we've got to learn from and, you know, we've had quite a number of young guys coming into our squad in and out through especially the second half of the season. I think all these games are a learning experience and the one thing about, one thing about losing and missing finals is that it doesn't camouflage things. Winning camouflages things. Losing makes you, makes you want to be hungry for next year and work on things we need to work on and that's going to happen. Well, our under-21s turned up with the right attitude in the hastings Deering colts competition. The visitors scored from the first set through Jacob Mene. The winger would finish with a hat-trick. Tyrese Woods also helped himself to a treble, while Jordan Lip bagged a brace in the 40 points to 16 victory. Now, the boys are still an outside chance of securing the minor premiership. They're tied at the top of the ladder with Wynnum, although our for and against is inferior. A big win in the final round would put the pressure on the Seagulls to sort of match that result when they battle Burley on Sunday. And as we alluded to earlier, our host plus cup side will take on Norths. Now the Devils are chasing a top four finish and we're going to try and avenge that loss we had to them way back in the opening round. We're about to hear from Aaron Payne to preview the match, but before we do, we'll have a refresher of what went down in that first game. Dead inside, dead inside, every single one of us, the devil inside. So this week sees us come up against an informed Devils outfit who have playing some really good footy over the last three or four weeks. They've got plenty of big explosive players that offload well uh, and the smarts of, of guys like Jack O'Hearn who have been around the Queensland Cup for a long time. You add in some NRL experienced players in Tyson Gamble, Tyrone Roberts and those type of players. Uh, they certainly are a force and really hitting their straps come finals time. If we're going to be uh, in this contest, it's really important that we play a hell of a lot better than last week. Look, what really let us down last week was our skill execution, in, in particular our passing and catching, was really poor. Um, you know, some of our KPI stats around quality sets was as low as it's been all year, um, down around that 25%, which is not acceptable, not even at local league level. So it's an area we need, certainly need to be better at, and that flows into our defence. Our mindset this week is finishing on our terms. Um, you know, obviously last weekend was really disappointing and that's not how we want to finish the season or re be remembered as for this season. So lastly, I'd just like to thank a few people. Yourself, Fergo, for a fantastic year on Get to the Chopper. Um, your social media work and everything you've done has been fantastic. I'd also like to thank our three retiring players, um, three blokes that have had a significant influence on us as a group and blokes I genuinely love and wish them all the best in their future endeavours. Thanks, Pandy. We turn our attention to Local League now. The RLTD had their season-ending awards on Friday night. Now, one of your favourite forwards picked up the top honour. Jack Johnson was named A-grade Player of the Year. 
on the back of a brilliant campaign for Burdekin. A great reward for him after what was a long road to recovery from a serious ACL injury. He was certainly surprised and we'll let him explain why he was stoked and relieved to take out the Dr Rod Ward medal. Our coach messaged me earlier in the week and said that I had to go to a TDR, TDRL thing and I assumed that I was on the report list or something for doing something wrong. So I just rocked up and yeah, blown away by the award. Um, being involved in such a good club at the Burdekin Roosters and yeah, just an absolute pleasure and, and um, stoked. Like last year, sort of three days a week, I was coming down and really busting my boiler to try and um, make my knee as good as it could. I, like I obviously didn't rush anything, but I wanted every stone to be turned over so that you know my return could be successful. Um, I think I still have some more goals that I want to chase. I'm still probably a long way away from being a consistent host plus cup player, but that's definitely my aspirations. Happy, I know you love the way Jack goes about his business, probably on and off the field, and it's good to see he said there he's determined to make that many Blackhawks team next year. Yeah, and it is. It, like, it, it's taken him you know, quite a while to, to rehab and get through that, you know, as it does most players. It's a long, tedious rehab process to come back from ACL, and it's a credit to Jack. Um, he's always got a smile on his face, he's working hard, and I you know, couldn't think of a better recipient of the Rod Ward medal than, than have him uh, win that. And it just shows, look, at, at, towards the end of the season, no doubt, he's he started to feel his legs again. Um, and, you know, look, he would be looking for a bigger and better um, 2023 season. So all credit to him and all credit to the local league boys. They, um, they've tooled pretty hard. And, you know, it's great to see that the three out of town club in the finals of the A grade. Um, it's, it's a credit to those clubs. It's a credit to the players and their coaching staff. You know, they go through a lot with regards to travel and having players based in Townsville and based in the local areas. And I think the RLTD is going to see massive crowds down there from the, you know, the supporters coming from out of town. So, yeah, it leads into it. Yeah, and we'll probably have to go back through the record books to see whether that's actually happened before. I yeah, I, I can't remember it. Uh, my memory's shot, but I can't remember the three out of town teams being in, in the finals altogether. Um, and again, it's a credit to those clubs. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the finals. We're going to hear from Jack again now and Justin Frame from the Miners ahead of Chartist Tower's Sudden Death Showdown with the Burdekin on Sunday. If we can perform the way I know we can perform, then yeah, I think we could be very, very successful in the final series. Chartist Towers and Burdekin are both teams that, if we do win this first round, I think we're both a dead set chance of going the whole way. So it'll be tough as nails, we'll be up the middle and um, looking forward to it. Yeah, both really deserving teams. I think Burdekin, they're good through the middle, like because of Hammer and Ugo. So. I reckon if we can match their middle, we'll go pretty good. It's probably going to be pretty close, so if we play well and we get our boys back, I reckon we'll go pretty good. Now the winner will face the loser out of Herbert River and Brothers. John Cullen and Mitch Grimes are about to give us their thoughts on what should be a cracking clash in the contest to get straight into the grand final. Yeah, well, they're actually up 2-1. Um, they got us earlier in the season and um, again later on up in Ingham. They've always been tough up the middle. Um, and you know they've always got a lot of spark out wide too. Um, so I think it's just a team that can hold the ball the most, uh, roll each other back and forth, and um, the, the team that holds the footy and completes their sets is going to go a long way to winning the game of footy, that's for sure. You know, it's sort of in our DNA that we try and play a grinding game rather than, uh, I feel like brothers sort of try and blow teams off the park early. You know, we try and grind and stay in there right to the final couple of minutes or, you know, try and win games at the back end of the second half. So it'd be very good to get the win in the round one and go straight through the grand final. Obviously, uh, Mitch Siri is retiring at the end of the year. He didn't uh, announce it to us at all. We sort of found out through Facebook, actually, through Herbert River. So he was uh, planning on to tell us in the final series. But ever since the boys have known, we've sort of, you know, grown an extra leg and, uh, you know, trying to get around him and send him off in a good way. So both those games are at the Townsville Sports Reserve on Sunday. A great afternoon of footy, a double header. So everyone get down there and support your local footy. Happy, that's us. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be the last show I've get to the chopper this season. But as the saying goes, we've saved the best till last. <laughs> oh, thanks, Nathan. It's great, man. And can I say a special thanks to you, mate, uh, for the time and effort you put in. Um, it's been a, it's a, been a great addition to our you know our social media and been a great addition to our club. Uh, I'm sure there's a number of regular viewers um, and and it's great to get uh, you know give the the local league the recognition it deserves as well as obviously the Blackhawks uh, in in our grades throughout the season. Big big thanks to you mate. Thanks mate. Uh, regular viewers that'd be me mum and dad and cousins that's about it I reckon. <laughs> 
Uh, now, don't worry guys, we're still going to keep you up to date with news, information and updates, so check out our club website and social media pages, particularly with the under-21s heading into the final series, and let's hope they can go one better than they did last year. Thanks for watching.